In this video, I will focus on solving equations containing the absolute value of a variable expression. The distance from zero on the number line is what we call the absolute value. It's always positive. The point seven and negative seven have the same distance from zero, which means that the absolute value of seven is seven, and the absolute value of negative seven is also seven. The main thing to remember with absolute values in an equation is that they result in two possible solutions. In our case, the solutions would be 7 and negative 7. In math speak, the absolute value of x is x. If x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. Let's start with a simple example. Solve the absolute value of x equals 5. We can see that x is 5 or x is negative 5. Hence our solutions are 5 and negative 5. Or the solution set is 5 and negative 5. Let's look at an example where the absolute value contains more than one term. The absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 5. There are two numbers between the absolute value bars that are equal to 5. So the expression between the absolute value bars is 5 or negative 5. So we can write two separate equations. 3x plus 2 equals 5 or 3x plus 2 equals negative 5. After subtracting 2 and dividing 3 on both sides we get x equals 1 and here we get after subtracting 2 and dividing by 3 on both sides, x equals negative 7 third. Let's move on to the next example. Solve 3 times the absolute value of x plus 12 equals 3. After subtracting 12 and dividing by 3, on both sides, we have the absolute value of x equals negative 3. As we know, the absolute value of a number is never negative. So this equation has no solution. Hence, the solution set is empty. Remember, no matter how complex the expression between the absolute value bars is, if it's equal to a negative number, the equation has no solution. Always keep that in mind. I want to show you another easy example. The absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to the absolute value of 1 minus x. Here we might ask, when are the absolute values of two expressions equal? To find the answer, see that the absolute value of 5 is equal to the absolute value of 5, the absolute value of negative 5 is equal to the absolute value of negative 5, and the absolute value of 5 is equal to the absolute value of negative 5. We see that two absolute value expressions are equal when the expressions between the absolute value bars are equal or are opposites of each other. Let's apply this knowledge and start first with the case when the terms in the absolute value bar is equal. 2x minus 1 is equal to 1 minus x. 
after adding 1, adding x and dividing by 3 on both sides, we get x is equal to 2 thirds. Second, solve the equation when the terms inside the absolute value bar are the opposite of each other. The opposite means we have to put a negative sign in front. And don't forget the parentheses either, because the negative sign is for the whole term. 2x minus 1 is equal to minus 1 minus x. When we remove the parentheses with the negative sign in front, we have to flip the signs between the parentheses, so 1 becomes negative 1 and negative x becomes x. Remove the 1 on both sides. Subtract x from both sides and we get x equals 0. So our solutions are 2 thirds and 0. And you can also say that our solution set contains the numbers 2 thirds and 0. Let's do this last example with two absolute values plus an extra number. Unfortunately, we must do even more steps to solve this equation as it's getting a little bit more complex. As you saw in the earlier examples when dealing with the absolute values, we always have to consider two cases. Remember the first case where the expression inside the bracket was greater or equal to zero and the second case where the term inside the bracket was negative. First, we split the absolute value on the left side into two different cases. Let's call them case 1 and case 2. And within the first case, we also have two cases, called A and B. And within case 2, there's also a case A and a case B. This overview is important, so we always know where we're at when solving the equation. Let's start with the first case of the left absolute value and remove the absolute value sign. The first case is 4x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. By adding 3 and dividing by 4 on both sides, we get x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths. Which means we are looking at this case with x is greater than or equal to 0 in mind. In other words, x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths is a condition we'll have to check later with another condition or with our solution to decide if it's in our solution set or not. At the moment we're examining the case where 4x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, so we don't have to write the absolute value sign. 4x minus 3 plus 3 equals the absolute value of 5 minus x. We can't remove the absolute value sign of the right absolute value because we haven't done any work with it yet. Now we have to split it into cases A and B. So we'll split this absolute value, case A being that x is greater or equal to 0 and case B where x is less than 0. Adding x on both sides leads to x is less than or equal to 5.
we now have a second condition which we have to check with our first condition. Is it possible that x is greater than or equal to 3 fourth and x is less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. For x equals 5 minus x. We see we have no more absolute value signs here, so we are very close to the end. Adding x and dividing by 5 on both sides leads us to x equals 1. Now let's see if it meets our conditions. In other words, is 1 in the restricted domain that we defined? 1 is greater than or equal to 3 fourth and 1 is less than or equal to 5. Hence, the 1 belongs to the solution set. We found one solution, but there could be three more to come. This was case A within case 1. Let's do case B. The expression between the absolute value sign is now less than 0. instead of greater than or equal to zero. Remember, everything we do next only applies to x is greater than five. And to x is greater than or equal to three fourth. As always, ask if it's possible that x is greater than or equal to 3 fourth and x is greater than 5. Yes, it is. Let's pay attention to the numbers that are greater than 5. Now we can remove the absolute value sign, but we are in the case where the expression in the absolute value sign is less than 0. So be careful and put the expression in parentheses with a negative sign in front. For x equals to negative 5 minus x. Subtracting x and dividing by 3 on both sides leads us to x equals negative 5 third. This is a possible solution, but we have to test if it matches the conditions. Does it violate one of the two conditions? x is greater than or equal to 3 fourth, or x is greater than Yes, it does. So negative 5 third is not in our solution set. All of this was with case 1, which had case A and case B inside it. So now we have x equals 1 in our solution set. Let's look at case 2 where 4x minus 3 is less than 0. We also solve this for x, like in case 1. After adding 3 and dividing by 4 on both sides, we have x is less than 3 fourth. This is our first condition for x. Let's remove the absolute value sign and put a negative sign in front of the expression because we are at the case where 4x minus 3 is less than 0.
Removing the parentheses and the negative sign in the front means once again we must switch the positive and negative signs in the parentheses. So we get um, negative 4x plus 6 equals the absolute value of 5 minus x. And once again we have to split this into case A and in case B. So keeping track, we are on case 2 right now and starting our case A inside of it. Once more, we'll take the expression in our absolute value symbol and put it greater than or equal to 0. After adding x on both sides, we get x is less than or equal to 5, which is our second condition. Let's check it with our first condition, where x is less than 3 fourths x can be less than 3 fourth and x can be less than or equal 5, which is fine. Now we can proceed to solve our equation without the absolute value signs because we are in the case where the expression 5 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. Minus 4x plus 6 equals 5 minus x. After adding for x, subtracting 6 and dividing by 5 on both sides we get x is equal to 1 third. Let's check our conditions again before we can put this solution in our solution set. We can also say that we are determining if it's a real solution. Can x be less than 3 fourth, less than or equal to 5, and 1 third? Yes, it can. So we can put 1 third in our solution set. Great, now we have a second real solution. Let's move on to case B in case 2. We must find out again the conditions in which our possible solution is a real solution. Case A was greater than or equal to 0. Now in case B, we have 5 minus x is less than 0. Which is x is greater than 5. after adding x on both sides. Checking it again with the previous conditions where x is less than 3 fourths shows us that we can stop here because our solution has to be less than 3 fourths and greater than 5. We have our two solutions which are 1 and one third, which we can put into our solution set. These are the only two numbers when we put them in our equation, the equation is true. Let's recap the most important things. The absolute value is the distance from zero on the number line. For example, seven and negative seven have the same distance from zero which means the absolute value of 7 is 7 and the absolute value of negative 7 is also 7. Remember, no matter how complex the expression between the absolute value bars is, if it's equal to a negative number, the equation has no solution. Always keep that in mind. The main thing to remember with absolute values is that they result in two possible solutions. When removing the absolute value signs, 
Remember that we always have two cases. The expression in the absolute value signs can be greater than or equal to zero or less than zero. And always make sure that you check your conditions as you're finding your solution. Look at the examples again and make sure you really understood them, especially the last really complex one. If you do some examples of the complex one by your own, it's not nearly as complicated like it looks when you first see it. If you have any questions or either kinds of absolute value equations, feel free to ask me in the comments. This was about absolute value equations. I will also make a video about absolute value inequalities, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. This video is what I did for you. If you want to do something for me, hit the bell button, share and subscribe. Happy learning everyone.